Hello guys, welcome to Train Sim TV. My name is Tom and in today's video we're going to be having another look at the Bullby and Skinning Grove route which is available from UK Train Sim. The link is provided in the description below if you wish to have a look at this one for yourself. Uh, we had a look at this on our last stream, so the Tuesday just gone before this video went live. Um, for our first drive, uh, we did class 37s with um, some PGAs I think. I'm not quite sure on the actual type of wagons, but they were potash um, liveried wagons. Um, and it was quite a nice run. I enjoyed it. A couple of niggles with it, but overall it's a, it's a nice little uh, drive. It's not a massive route. Um, overall it's about 12 miles long, I think. It takes about 40 to 50 minutes to complete a run, though, uh, with the various changes in speed uh, throughout the route. We start the route just outside of Saltburn. Um, so when we get ourselves going, I've got my atlases, so I'm going to actually give you some proper junction names today. Uh, so when we get going, we are going to head off, um, and we're going to sort of like we're going to cross over, and that's going to take the Mask Saltburn West Junction, and then we're going to sort of uh, head off. We, we we do start climbing quite early in this route um, to the right hand side, and we then start taking um, the run down the freight line um, down towards Bulby. So we'll go past um, various little villages along the way, um, skirt the coastline as well. Um, then we'll end up going past Skinning Grove um, Yard. We'll take a look at that as well. We'll go past and then we'll continue our run. And it's quite a climb up to Bulby, so hopefully you'll enjoy the run. Um, so this time we're changing it up. We're doing a run with the AP Class 56 and it is a tanker working. So it's Stanlow to Bulby. Uh, we've got finer liveried um, fast line simulation T tanker wagons. Uh, so this is a skin I've literally just downloaded for this scenario. So it's the first time I've seen this skin before in TS. We have got RW Enhancer as well. Um, I've slightly changed the weather on the scenario just so it's um, it's got a bit more brighter and it's in the in the summer days so we get a nice nice setup on the lighting as well as you can see there. Um, so we're gonna get ourselves straight into it and get going. Sit back and enjoy the video, guys. So we're virtually we are set up there. So we yeah, got ourselves going. So at the minute it's 40 mile an hour, it does drop down to 10 mile an hour uh, just up ahead as you can see on the hood there hopefully. That marks where the crossover uh, is for Marsk, uh, West Saltburn Junction. So as it says on the hood there, 12.16 miles to Bul uh, Bulby Mine reception siding. There's quite a number of scenarios included with the route. Um, there's not as such as a remiss, if you will, for the scenarios. You've got to sort of hunt around for the bits and pieces. But overall, they're not actually too hard to find the requirements on the uh, scenarios. A uh, bit of RW tools, a little bit of digging on Google. If you find out what the reskins are on uh, RW tools, you can sort of find them quite easily. I think the majority of the skins I've found so far are from uh, DP Simulation with the Richard Fletcher skins. So they are quite easy to pick up. Nice and simple to install also. So our train is loaded, so we are going to see a bit of a strain when we start climbing out of fort with this. We've got a, a rake of one, two, three, four, oh, oh, slip in that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve tankers on this run. I'm going to shut the power off now because we are approaching the junction quite soon as well. So there's, overall, the, the scenery itself is, is rather nice. It's got a nice variety in foliage. Um, one thing that was picked up as well when we, when we did this on the stream was the fact that there's a lack of 3D trees, unfortunately. Um, I think if this had 3D trees line side, I think it would make it even more of an enjoyable experience. Um, definitely. Um, so if, if the creator of the route does happen to see this video and you are watching, hope hope it maybe might take some of these uh, on board and better the route even more because it's a fantastic um, little route you've done. Um, the other things like tracks moving as well, um, the gradients are quite sharp and harsh um, but overall fantastic, I think I had one signal that was a bit a bit of an issue with up at Skinning Grove but overall it, it runs really nice. It's nice on the FPS as well. Hello. 
So as we cross over now, if the line straight ahead up that way takes you into Saltburn, so Saltburn is literally just up ahead where the buildings are. Uh, the scenery is not um, fully focused on that bit, obviously, because there's only a little bit of the run there, so it's mainly for AI purposes, if you will. Um, as well on UK Train Sim, the creator of this route has also got a Yorkshire Steam version of this, so it's uh, a lot more on the map. And if you look at the map on this route, you can see how it's been sort of it's been chopped and changed, and this route has been adapted from that. But you can see bits of remnants of the old Steam route that's in there. Like you can see where Whitby is here, so that's where Whitby Station sort of lives around here. So it's been sort of worked from there. So you can see straight away the uh, the climb that's uh, facing us in a moment. You can sort of see where the, the, the harshness of the gradients are, um, where they just sort of like jump straight up rather than a gradual smooth. So if you watch the train go over them, you can get this. They don't, the, the, the actual bogus sort of leave the rails for a moment because of the harshness of the, um, the track. But they are quite easy to fix, so hopefully, the, uh, the, again, the author might uh, hopefully work on that. There's another 56 coming off here. This, these are the potash uh, wagons, which I mentioned as well. I'm going to try and go for a screenshot here because I think... Be quite a nice setting. Think, he says, I can get a right angle. It's really awkward with the lighting. We'll go with that one for now, but it might change. So we've got a quite a quite a steep climb. You can see the uh, the train's actually struggling to get up the hill. Caravan park over there. All sorts, loads of allotments and stuff like that as well, dotted about on the route. Yeah, the sun's in a really awkward place. It's literally straight on. So at the minute, it's a bit not where it was obviously when we started the video. It was quite, um, quite alright where we were sat on the angle with the train. But as we've moved around, we've lost that sun for that shot. Really, but never mind. I'm not sure what it's like in a minute coming around here. Nope. Well, this is quite a nice shot. You can see the train really struggling to get up here. <laughs> be amazed if we get up here, to be quite honest. It actually might take us a while. I have faith in it. Oh, it's picking up very slightly. It's gone back up a bit. Really is probably going to try and test this class 56 I'm going to let you sit back and enjoy the noise We are picking some speed up now. 
start climbing we'll go up to 16 mile an hour now but we are going to slow back down again in a second for a 10 mile an hour uh, speed drop as we cross onto the single line section Big single line section and all the way up to uh, skinning grove where there's another little passing loop there The other thing I did also pick on was um, like possibly a lack of um, track ballast paint on the ground. Nice to see some of that. Pop a little bit more power back on just so it don't drop all the way down. Again, very trained for the class 56 on this. We are still climbing at the minute. And the one I did um, on the stream last was a double 37 run, so it wasn't so much of an effort to get up the hill uh, with that. I got through that pretty, uh, pretty quite easily, really. So it's stuff like this you see at these lovely back, like drops and when we cross over all these high bridges and stuff, and you just see like, the old bits and pieces in the distance, the old houses and stuff like the. It's a bit oldie world of this sort of area in the country, I feel. It's a bit like an area, sort of an area that's sort of like time stood still, if you will. So we're up to 30 now, so we can pop some more power on. the time at the minute on the uh, clock down there is 05.40 in the morning. We are due in there at Bulby Mine for about 06.23 it's saying on there for me. 10 miles to go. So as you can see it's quite a lengthy run uh, with uh, the various speed changes that we will come uh, and face. currently at 21 miles per hour sitting there at the minute we are still climbing it's sort of dropping again now so I'm just looking on my map as well and the next point of interest is until Skinny Grove now um, which is Craig Hall and uh, Skinny Grove Chorus uh, Yard which is about sort of Four miles ish, I think. Something like that. Let's look on here. It's still about midpoint, if you will, so about four or five miles. Probably it's quite a big, extensive bit of yard here and stuff like that. So some sidings as well. It's nicely, uh, nicely sceneried as well. Uh, with the use of buildings that are in there, in place there. This is 100% on power and we are currently at 18.7. Uh, we are climbing at a 1 in 87 as well on the gradient.
start picking up a bit now, it's levelled out a little bit at the minute. Back in the 187 once again. You see what I mean there, where it sort of it jumps about on the um, gradient changes there. It's just due to the uh, lack of smoothing. I think it is around here as well. There's uh, an old railway line that used to take off in that direction there, so you can see where the old bridge was. Well, a line went off down that direction. You can see where some of the old scenery has been left in as well. And the other li another line sort of came in off the top of the on this sort of this line. You can see the bridges over there, and then they sort of joined in on that way. Not too sure where they went though. But there's a trap left in as well. It just shows um, he's obviously he's managed to get two routes out of one. Uh, the Yorkshire Steam Days version, obviously, I think, it was the first, and this came second. As I say again, both of them are available from UK Train Sim. They both came back up at the same time. I did see this route come up um, once a good while ago. And it sort of like disappeared again. I don't think it got took down. I just sort of, it just got forgotten about by myself and just obviously got lost in the list of all the releases at UK Trains that have been on there in the past. And then it popped up again. I think on um, Sunday, just gone Saturday or Sunday, just gone. So, but yeah, we'll have a look to see what's been done. And the use of the grass pack as well, uh, the VP grass pack being one of the things that's been used um, on here. This uh, line does still actually operate today as well uh, with freight. Find loads of pictures as well on uh, Flickr and stuff, especially with that where it coasts the, co uh, the, the, the cliff face a little bit further up. Some nice, uh, there's some nice photos on the internet. It's one of them routes as well that I've, I've wanted to see in train for a while. I mean, DP Simulations North East England route, the closest that we, we get to with that is Millsborough, and then obviously it takes off then towards Nunfort, so it doesn't come anywhere up here, but it's the closest route we have in train sim. Um, but I don't think Darren's got any um, plans as such to do this neck of the woods, so it is, it's nice to at least see a version of the route. Some people on the pass, uh, platform, people still waiting there for a train that's probably never going to come. Um, oh, obviously Null Station, not too sure what that's called, it doesn't say anything about it unfortunately in my map and I haven't got any, any maps or anything such at hand. I'm sure someone will know what, it, uh, what the name of the station was. It has been a little bit, the 20 board seems to be a little bit further from where this actual speed change took place there. There's a bit of a catcher out of there. I'm going to say I wasn't speeding as if you will, but the actual board is further up. Well, we're at the right speed in the minute for the board anyway. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, yeah, so it's, the, it's nice to see the route in game finally. Um, and another one is uh, the other one that gets close up here is uh, Chainsaw Wills T's Valley Line. That goes up to Saltburn, so that has a junction on it, but there's no freight line included with that route which is a shame really because it was only over 12 miles but you never know maybe DTG might add that in one day as an extension that'd be nice 
opens up more possibilities and possibly you might get more locos maybe out of it, you never know. Extra wagons and stuff. Oh, I just love these rolling views you get. You look for miles and miles. You've got the coast that comes in in the moment as well, so you've got a bit of town over there as well. As we get ever closer towards the cliff face, which is literally on this next curve coming up just around there. And Skinning Grove is literally, you can see where the yards are there. See, I haven't quite loaded in just yet because we're not uh, close enough. Also, very out. We're doing 56 miles per hour uh, on 50, sorry, on the percentage of the uh, power handle. Not 56 miles an hour. Very, very much would be speeding. It's also nice to do something different as well with NTS, different style of routes, rather than the normal uh, of the DTG releases and stuff like that. It's nice to come and see. Um, some uh, like, uh, freeware stuff. What's been done? One thing, as I do say before, as long as you can see beyond the two D scenery line side, it's a lovely run. Um, it doesn't. I have no gripe with the 2D at the end of the day, it's, uh, it helps on the FPS as well. Uh, but 3D on the line side definitely would be a, a huge game changer with the, with the appearance on the line side at least. Back up to 30 miles per hour as well. Plenty of clag. We're coming up to the uh, the cliff face now, which I mentioned before, you see quite a lot of photos of. A boat down there in the water as well, you can see. These nice footpaths as well, I bet it's lovely to come and have a walk on in real life. Doggo has come for a little wander as well, and to watch the trains. Coming off from his master. So you get these lovely, lovely views. You can just see now um, Skinning Grove is just coming to view all the building work there. Uh, so Skinning Grove Chorus. I think the majority of the traffic that runs on this line today is uh, Class 66 operated. Um, I know mail tours have run in the past. Mark mentioned um, on our stream when we did the Silver Night, he's been up here on uh, the K1 uh, in the past. I think a couple of times he's been up here. I'm not sure if network rail test trains get down here either, to be honest. Possibly could do. We're dropping down on a 1 in 92 gradient currently, so we just need to keep around the uh, on the brakes as, and the speed. It does drop to 15 miles per hour in a, uh, in a couple of moments' time, so about half a mile. Uh, we do have a signal coming up also. Um, not too sure if the signals are quite set up right. Uh, as this one's a home, 
which goes green, but the next one is another home signal. I'm not too sure if this should be a distant, possibly. Could be wrong. But I had I had issues with the signal after this on the stream, so this might not change either. This one does change when you get up to it, though. It did the uh, stream anyway, so we just start slowing ourselves uh, down to it. See a little bit of tile lag as well. It's just loading all the scenery on this section because it's quite a busy area, but it does sort itself out. As you can see, it's now uh, just changed to green there. Just makes me wonder if this one's been um, linked up properly. If it doesn't change. Go to tab it. I don't think it's going to change, to be honest. No, it's approved us. It's not going to change. It would have changed by now, to be honest. Proceed. This is Craig Hall, this area, I believe, as my map's telling me. So we uh, have some sidings here for the uh, the chorus shard. We do have another little passing loop here as well. So it's also got a nice, uh, it's got all the cabling as well for the points and all the signals. A little stands for the token being passed as well by the signalman. The next signal's changed green. It's just something with that one. I might have a look at some point and see if I can figure out what's up with it. So this is the I'm gonna give this a pause for a moment so we can see the, the actual scenery around here. So again, quite an extensive yard there. I'm gonna be messing the texture, I'm not quite sure what that is. Um there's a couple of milk bottles dotted about here and there, so I'm, I am missing something somewhere, but I have got everything listed on the actual uh, site, so there's possibly some bits may be missing, like you can see over there, there's a couple of bottles. Not too sure what they are. Possibly could be lamps or something, maybe. I don't too, I'm not too sure. Um, so we've got big, massive, big yards there. I don't think you can go in them. I think they're just static doors. I don't think the doors would open to me. There's no actual um, detailing inside them. So you've got, um, you come around here and you've got some fueling roads as well. So you've got a little bit of stabling area for locos whilst they're waiting. Uh, you can go all the way around the back of here as well. There's more sidings there, and there's a head shunt also. I like this as well, there's pipe work coming down here. It goes off down there. That used to be an old railway on here, as well as some uh, tracks. I never noticed these overnight. Must have been an old little dock. Or something. Maybe the line did actually come up here at one point, I don't know. It doesn't look like it is, but it's sort of. With the tracks down there, it has a feel, bit of a possibility that it maybe did go up there. It might have been chain hold or something, I'm not too sure. Um, who knows? I'm sure someone might know in the chat. Uh, again, so you come around this side, you've got some more um, sheds and stuff. Some more stable facilities. They can go inside there as well. I like these. Um, I'm not too sure, though, if the animate couldn't quite make out. So, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Possibly would just be sat there as a, um, a static item, to be honest. They look cool. Actually, I'm not too sure if they come from Doncaster Works. Hearts, uh, Herbert Morris Loughborough. 
And again, some more over here. So there's loads of um, potential in scenarios here. We will move on. So we are 4.93 miles to Bulby Mine. This is about the halfway point. It was about 12 miles on it when we first started. We have actually done seven, so it's probably a little bit more actually than half on the halfway point. So we've got a journey total of about 25 minutes. We're going to drop down now as well, so we need to get ready with the brakes. <clears throat> Whether there's a possibility for a screenshot, I don't quite know, but it's got a strange effect with the weather. Oh, I might do it. Not that building with a missing texture out. That's good. We'll go with that, I think. I like that. We are back up to 20 as well. And the uh, speed there as well. And as if my manager has gone nice and sunny again. There's another little station halt there as well. And it's gone dark him. <laughs> Bit of a climb again, nothing too much just yet, but there is a um, it does go into a quite a, a, a gradual climb in a moment. You sort of see, I don't know if you can quite make out on the hood, but it does gradually get steeper once we come off this curve. We are just about approaching where the gradient uh, climbs up even more, and you can sort of see where it, it kinks up as we climb up and bend around the corner there. It's literally sort of coming up now, as you'll notice it anyway. Really struggling here.
My brakes were definitely off. Looks like those ones an old yard here as well. An old yard lamp there. You can tell there's obviously there was sheds here that leads here, so there must have been a little connection there. It's nice to see these old lost sort of areas from the railway. We're literally going to be snail pacing up this uh, next hill. Uh, we also do climb up towards, I think it's called Grinkle Tunnel. It is, it's Grinkle Tunnel. That's sort of like the last bit before the final curb into the, the mine. So we're a mile or so away just at the moment. We're about three and a half miles to Bulby Mine. 8.7 at the minute we are sort of sitting at. We are climbing a little bit actually now, we're gaining some speed. Uh, we're doing a climb of a 1 in 96 currently. And we are actually now into a 1 in 49. So it's still climbing. Nice to have to contend with any AWS or anything on this. <laughs> no worries of uh, missing it. Just more of a case of having to keep an eye on your brakes as well when you're uh, coming up hills or going down a hill. I've not driven down the other direction yet, so I don't know what it's going to be like with it, obviously, with other acre wagons. Still can't even see the tunnel yet. at 7.3 currently. makes me worry this, are we actually going to make it or not? <laughs> I've never stalled on a diesel loco like this before, if it's going to happen. If we had another wagon, we'd not make this. 12 is definitely the max. Borderline. 11 I'd probably go with just to make sure you're going to get up it. So again, we are climbing to 1 in 49 at the moment.
3.3 miles per hour as well we are currently at. Not massively far to go. I think the tunnel's sort of around here. Yeah, it's over there. <laughs> we might make it for Christmas. It's still definitely hanging in there, 2.3 mile an hour. Not giving up. come down to 1.5 it's getting a bit worrying now Just trying to find out where the actual gradient's moving out. I don't know. I think it still climbs it. This is still the same climb here. It's there. We have literally ground to a halt. It is still moving.
Lethal at 0.2 miles per hour. The cows seem to be enjoying it. Although we don't seem to be getting very far now, which is annoying. Although, oh, winner. It's picking up some speed. Ah, finally. Right, we're back up a little bit in speed. We're back up to 2.3, which is a good sign. It certainly has been a trying run. I mean, we are a little bit late now. Time has got on a little bit. But we are sticking it out, as you can see. Now up to 3 mile an hour, which is a good sign. Just shows it's quite a uh, challenging run. Not all runs are simple 75 mile hour unit drives. You've got stuff like this, what happens in the real world. We're going up nearly to six mile an hour. We've been treated to some uh, speed again now. Excellent. At least we're getting towards the um, tunnel now.
How are we doing it? Let's have a look. So the tunnel's just over there. The gradient changes somewhere around here. It's, it's here. So we've got one there, and then another one just up ahead before the tunnel there. And again, it is Grinkle Tunnel. So it's two and a half miles away, <clears throat> but we should get there quite soon, hopefully. Church over there with all the gravestones. We're back into double figures again now, guys, which is a happy sign. Should bring our ETA down again, hopefully. Well, as we do approach Grinkle Tunnel, we do have a 15 mile an hour speed limit. So we probably will be on the same time, I would have thought.
So as well, a bit of information, uh, it is also a 993 yard long tunnel. Single portal, and it has always been a single portal tunnel, um, as you can tell. Foliage popping through the top there. It stays 15 mile now, and we do drop down on the gradient up uh, to Booby, uh, Bulby, Bulby. Just 1.3 miles to go. But it is a very enjoyable run and a challenge run at that, as you did see. So if you have stuck it out all the way up here, massive thanks to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. to the distance and you can just about see then the left hand side in the distance is where the mine um, area is It drops down to keep an eye on the uh, the brakes on this bit just to keep uh, your speed on on check. Drops down to five mile an hour on the entrance as well, the mine area. So just on the entrance as well, there is a stop board, so we'll do the uh, the right thing and stop, of course, as you would as uh, railway regulations say. <clears throat> all the line will be set. It is all automatic point work around on this uh, yard. Hopefully the microphone's not picking up those police helicopters out as well. Making lots of noise. I don't think the microphone will pick it up to be honest. Again, there's a few milk bottles around here. Whatever they are, I do not know. I'll have a look. I might take it through RW tools and see what it is. So as you would await for instructions, 
we will obviously continue to our destination which is just up ahead Not sure. Uh, now I touched on this a bit on the stream the other night. I'm not sure if there was a junction that sort of went off in this direction around the back, as um, you can see there. I think the junction did go that way because there was a railway. I don't think it, it came any other way around. I'm assuming it, it, it took this sort of alignment. I'm speeding in there whilst I'm talking, but you can see where the old scenery's been left in, so it must have followed this. It can't have come around the back of there um, and went off that way towards Whitby and that way. So you've also got a loader there, so you can actually uh, operate that and load up your wagons. Some more up there as well. Not sure if the big one works. Let's have a look. I think this one's just a purely an asset, to be honest, rather than an operating one. There's no actual um, loading stuff on that. Though I'm not overly sure what sort of working would where a tanker would load, unload it actually, or why. Must be the working of this. They must have fueled something with the oil. I'm assuming, obviously, a building must have been around here somewhere that used it all. No idea. Well, there is some tanks there. Right, we are on the marker. I do hope you've enjoyed this video as well, guys. Massive thanks to everyone that has come to have a watch and also stuck out um, the, the sheer slog of the run. Um, huge thanks. I've been Tom. This has been Train Some TV. Don't forget you can like, share, and subscribe at Twitch and on YouTube. So, Twitch, we're on twitch.tv forward slash Train Some TV underscore Tom and also Train Some TV underscore Mark. Um, my channel um, is more regular than Mark's, but uh, Mark does do occasional bits and pieces, uh, mainly like root building and that. So do keep an eye out and give him a follow. Um, also, don't forget to like, share, subscribe on YouTube as well. Any feedback as such, uh, we do like to hear from you. And we do try and take everything on board and try and improve on that. Um, if there's anything that we might have missed, etc. Again, huge thanks. Thank you for joining us. And we will catch you on the next video. Take care and stay safe. Bye for now.